Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 9 of ultimate uh, python course. So this is all about uh, operators. Now we are seeing operators. Okay, so what is an operator? So if we have a plus b, now these two are called operands. These two are called operands and plus is the operator, right? It can be unary operator. This is a binary operator. There can be unary operators also. Now if I write 1 plus 2, these two are, these numbers are also called these numbers will also be called as operators, operands, and plus is an operator. Okay. So don't write the notes. You please, uh, I will give you the entire lecture slides as well as lecture notes in the description. You can use them. And watch my videos at 2x speed because I will generally be very slow while teaching. So watch it at 2x speed. And in case if you already know about operators, just skip this video. Don't waste your time. So you, you must be knowing about all these uh, operators. Arithmetic, assignment, comparison, logical, bitwise, identity, membership, special, and special operator. If you don't know any of these topics, then only watch them. If you already know all these topics, then don't watch them. Okay. Now coming to arithmetic operations. So, what are the various arithmetic operations that are available for us? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, exponentiation, and floor division. You already know addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So all that you don't know is modulus, exponentiation and floor division. Only thing you don't know is modulus, exponentiation and floor division. And anyway, anyway, coming to modulus, I will explain you what it is, exponential and floor. So these three you just watch me, watch these and others will just skip them, okay? Because you know what is an operand and what is an operator. I told you about that. Coming to addition, there is nothing to say. A plus B is the addition. 3 plus 1, 4 plus 1 is the addition. Right. For example, A is 5, B equals 7. A plus B is 12. And in this lecture, I'm not talking about floating point numbers. I'll take a separate lecture for floating, floating point numbers. Okay. And subtraction is also simple. A minus B, B minus A. Right. If you have A equal to 5, B equal to 3, A minus B is going to be 2. Right. And then multiplication is also simple, right? So a equal to 5, b equal to 3. Then a star b is equal to 5 star 3, right? Simple, 15, 15, right? And division is also simple. 6 by 3 equal to 2, that's it, right? So don't don't worry about, don't stress too much on this basic operators. Huh, but modulus is important. Modulus is very important coming to interviews, okay? What is modulus operator is? When you have 4 mod 3 something like this it is nothing but when you divide this number 4 by 3 if you divide the number 4 by 3 what is the remainder so remainder is 1 isn't it what is one other way of doing it take the number less than or equal to 4 some number less than or equal to 4 which is multiple of 3 which is greatest so that is nothing but 3 right I, with the examples, you'll understand it. Okay. So now, since you got 3, 4 minus 3 is answer, right? So, what I mean to say is, what I mean to say is, let us say, let us say, hmm, 11, 11 modulo 3. Now, what is the remainder of 11? What is the remainder when you divide 11 by 3? When you divide 11 by 3, what is the remainder? What is the remainder here? 2. Because 3, 3s are 9 and then there are 2 extra, right? 10 and 11. What is the other way of doing it? Find out the largest number less than or equal to 11 in such a way that it is a multiple of 3. Find the largest number less than or equal to 11 such a way that it is a multiple of 3. What is the largest number less than or equal to 11 which is a multiple of 3? It is 9. It is 9. Right. Okay. Now, once you get 9, take the number 11 and subtract 9 from it. 11 minus 9 is 2. This is one other way of answering it. One other way of answering it. Now, why am I preferring this way is, see, you can directly find the remainder, but in positive numbers, it is very easy. But when negative numbers are given, it is very difficult. Not very difficult, little bit difficult. Now, let us see here. So 4 modulo 4, 11 modulo 4 is 3 because 11, 4 2s are 8 and then 11 means 3. 
5 modulo 17. Whenever we take a number which is less than the, less, whenever a is less than or equal to b, then the answer is always a. Whenever a is less than b, the answer is always a. Okay. When you apply the modulus operator. Modulus operator. Okay. Now, 121 modulo 10. What is it? When you take 121 and when you divide by modulo 10, it is going to be but it is going to be remainder is going to be 1, right? Because 120 is 12 into 10. So you are going to get remainder as 1. Right. Hmm. Now minus 19 and 7. How are you going to solve it? So in the number line, minus 19, minus 20, minus 21 minus 22 will be there now what is the largest number less than minus 19 which is a multiple of 7 minus 21 the largest number which is less than the largest number which is less than minus 19 which is a multiple of 7 is minus 21 right therefore we got minus 21 now what do you do you take minus 19 minus of minus 21 then what do you get minus 19 plus 21 which is 2 2 is what you get <coughs> similarly if a is 21 b is 7 it is directly a multiple of 7 right therefore in that case it is it, it is exactly divisible right therefore you are going to get 0 now a equal to minus 11 b equal to 13 right so what do you do what is the largest number so here let us say here it is minus 11 minus 12 minus 13 minus 14 somewhere there is 0 okay so what is the largest number less than minus 11 which is a multiple of 3 it is minus 12 right it is minus 12 therefore therefore you got minus 12 so minus 11 minus of minus 12 is 1 right that's it now exponentiation exponentiation you already know raising one number to the power of other number right for example if i write a exponentiation b which means that a value of a should be raised to the power of value of b 10 power 3 now a equal to 8 b equal to 10 right so 8 8 raised to the power 4 and then minus 8 raised to the power 4 right a, a exponentiation b means minus 8 raised to the power 4 and here 8 raised to the power minus 4 that is the meaning of this okay these are very simple and then floor division so floor division is nothing but you divide a number by other number and get the quotient floor division is nothing but the lowest integer less than that quotient i'll take i'll take examples and explain you better okay let us say 11 by 4 so 11 by 4 right let us say it is 2.25 something like this 2.25 something like this hmm? Now, what is the integer, largest integer less than it, which means the integer should be less than this number, less than or equal to this number. What is the largest integer less than or equal to this number? So, the largest integer less than or equal to this number is 2.25 is 2 only, right? 2. So, minus 5 divided by, minus, divided by 3. What is the quotient? The quotient is minus 1 point something, right? Minus 5 divided by um, 3 the quotient is minus 1 point something the quotient is minus 1 point something right now what is the largest integer what is the largest integer so if you look, look at in the number map minus 1 minus 2 here minus 1 point something will be there what is the largest integer less than minus 1 point something the largest integer is minus 2. So minus 2 is printed as the output, right? Now minus 14 floor floor division 5. 
So it is minus 2.8, minus 2.8. If you draw the number line, if you draw the number line, minus 2 is here, minus 2.8 is here, minus 3 is here. So what is the number that is less than, what is the integer that is less than minus 2.8? which is highest, highest such integer, biggest such integer, largest such, in, that such integer is minus 3, right? Therefore, minus 3 is the answer, okay? And assignment operators, you know, they are used to assign values to operate or variables. For example, you can say a equal to 10, right? Which means 10 is going to be assigned to a. And now there are shortcut, uh, shortcut operators, for example, you will see something like this a plus c equal to right for example a plus c equal to 10 is written what is the meaning of this is it is a shorthand way of writing a equal to a plus 10 this is a shorthand way of writing it so a plus c equal to 10 is nothing but a equal to a plus 1 this is called shorthand notation shorthand assignment okay so similarly you can do the minus also right for example if you write a equal to a minus 10 you can write it simply as a minus equal to 10 right similarly you can do it for multiplication as well if you have to write a equal to a into 10 then simple way of writing is a star equal to 10 simple way of writing it right same with division same with modulus right so we are done with the assignment operators and arithmetic operators but then I didn't show you about the floating point numbers. Why I didn't show you about the floating point numbers is they are a little bit different, right? So if you write, if you write 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, it has to be 0 0.3, right? But the number will be something like this. At the end, there is 4 is coming. And if you see whether 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.3, it will say false. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is not. So, so floating point numbers are a little bit different. We will look at them. We are working really hard to make this course as best as possible and to give it to you to, to give it to you for free. So my only uh, request would be please do subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to the channel. Comment and like so that we'll, our reach will increase and we can reach more and more students. Okay. Thank you so much. Hi. If you want to take my gate classes. We go to the website ravindrababuravala.in and you are going to see all my gate classes available there. Okay. So coming to the classes, they are all recorded. Why am I doing recorded? Why am I not doing live classes is I have thousands of students registering for my courses every year. But then if I conduct a live class, only 20 or 30 people will be there. 20 or 30, that's it. Maximum is 40 I had. The reason is Live classes are little bit wasting your time. See, you cannot watch a live class at 2x speed. You have to watch at the pace at which I teach. Generally, I will be very, very slow while teaching. So if you can go through the live classes, you can watch them at 2x speed and you can complete the syllabus very fast. 400 plus hours content is there for gate. And if you are going to watch them at normal pace, it will take 400 hours. But if you watch it at 2x speed, it will take just 200 hours, right? So if you want any of my gate classes, gate computer science or gate DA, the price is just 10,000 rupees. It is very, very reasonable for the kind of quality we provide. We have test series, we have doubt sessions, we have videos, we have lecture notes for everything. Even you don't have to write any lecture notes. I will provide you lecture notes for every subject. You just have to sit back, watch the videos at 2x speed and revise the notes. Short notes will be provided, long notes will be provided, formulas will be written in a separate notes. Everything will be there provided to you. You don't have to work hard. And coming to, if you are planning to go abroad, we also have study abroad program. You can go through my number. My number is on WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is in the website. If you are planning to do masters abroad, that is a very good choice. It is better than doing masters in India. So if you are planning to go abroad, we will help you out right from the from taking the passport to getting the visa, visa, US visa, right? So we will help you out in the entire process. Okay. So do visit the website, see what is happening there. Even DSA course is there for 5,000 rupees, which is both in Python and C++. Okay. 
सो थैंक यू सो मच